All right, welcome back everyone. Another video on the basics of graph. I wanna talk about how to extend graph or generally how you can add macros and make your own commands in case something is a little too long or you wanna abbreviate something or really just make it your own thing. I'm also just gonna talk about some other formatting stuff I didn't touch on in the last video. Uh, so here we have another document. Again, we're using the MS macros. I'm still compiling the PDF and here is our document here. We have some headings, we have some text, paragraph text. One thing I don't think I mentioned in the last video, so NH starts a uh, section. So NH for introduction, NH for formatting, both of these set sections start with NH. You can also use SH, and what SH is, is a unnumbered heading. So you'll notice the numbers disappear if we recompile this. So if you're the kind of person who either doesn't want numbered headings or maybe you need a heading that isn't numbered, you can easily use SH to get what you want. So that's just one minor note. Let's talk about, talk about some other formatting before I talk about making your own macros. Um, so we talked about bold and italics in the last video. One thing I didn't mention that is sort of important about the bold and italics macros is, let's say uh, the last uh, word of this sentence is um, bold. And I want the word bold to be bold. So. You'll notice here, well, first off, if I put a period on the next line, it's gonna read the period as just being, you know, a command or something, but let's say we replace it with an exclamation point. You'll notice that this exclamation point, there's actually a space between bold and the exclamation point. Now, in some languages, that's actually how they format it. It's not how we would do it in English. That looks very silly in English. Um, now, the thing about the bold command is if you want to add something directly to the end of this, you have to add it as the second argument. You notice if we redo this, you'll see that this exclamation point is at the end, um, but it has not been added as, I mean, it's not bold and there's no space between it. So that's what you wanna look for. Or if, let's say we wanna end the parenthesis here, uh, one other thing about bold commands and italic commands is they can take three arguments where the first one is the thing you bold, the second one is the thing that goes directly after, and the third one is the thing that goes directly forward. So we can put a parenthesis here as well, and you'll see that this is now bold in parentheses. Okay, so that works as well. And I think we can uh, easily, we might have to put that in quotation. No, I guess not. Okay, so we can we can do pretty much what you expect. Okay, so that, that's bolding. That's one thing I just failed to mention in the last video. But uh, another thing as well, let's talk about some other formatting. So one thing, one thing uh, we can do is uh, underline underline text, okay? So again, same formatting here, the period's at the end because we don't want it underlined, um, but you'll see that this is now underline text. Another thing that uh, Groff can do pretty easily is, um, uh, is create boxed text. So bar, I'm really missing that key, uh, box text, so that is something else, else we can add in here. So it's, it's pretty good at uh, formatting that relatively well. So th this is just some other minor things you can add into your knowledge, your knowledge of what kind of stuff uh, you can do in Groff. Uh, but let's make a new heading here and we're gonna talk about macros, okay? Now before we talk about macros, one thing, we, we, we need a reason to make our own macros. So here's a good one. Now you can make list items in Groff, and these are pretty easy to make, um, but they're a little, by default they're a little, uh, they leave some to be desired. Now to make lists or list items, you do IP, and so this is a list item. Uh, here is another, um, and another, oops, and another. Okay, so if we compile this though, you'll notice that our list, okay, things are indented. They, they sort of stick out, they're on their own individual line, but they don't have like a bullet point, they don't have a number, they don't have anything else like that. Now, um, the typical way of adding bullet points is the IP command can take an argument, which is this escape sequence, and that means bullet. So I can manually add these to each of these. Or you notice those, there's a big difference between you know the bullet and the text by default. That's a little weird. But the third argument, or I guess the, the second argument of IP is uh, a text width uh, that you know whatever width you want, uh, whatever padding you want between these two. So you'll see that I can change these list items relatively easily. But one thing that 
would annoy you if you're writing this on the fly and you want pretty much, let's say you want all of your list items to look like this. You don't want to have to rewrite this over and over and over again. That's sort of a pain. So one of the things you can do is of course make your own macro. So that's something that's relatively easy to do. We can do it with the DE command and these are non-capital DE and this is like define and what we can do is let's define a macro called BL. And I'll go ahead and say the macros, the definition ends with dot dot, so we'll go ahead and end that. Um, now we can define BL as just being whatever sequence we want to abbreviate. So let's say I don't want to have to type IP, you know, BU2 all that time. Now if we create this macro of BL, whenever we run BL, it's just going to reproduce that text. So we don't have to type it up over and over again. So. Well, first off, let's uh, well let's add another section heading. So there's some kind of break here. Um, here's a break. Okay, just so you can see that that's there. Now let's try this out. So if I type in bl, so this is a bulleted item. Um, oops, missing all the keys. Uh, here is another something like that. So all we have to do is type BL. And since we've defined this macro, it just is reading this macro up here. And it works all totally fine. Okay. Uh, so that works more or less how you'd expect it to. Uh, now I could move, let's say this is sort of ugly where it is, maybe I can move it to the top of the document, you know, sometime in tech or other documents, it's nice to define things at the beginning, uh, just so you know, you won't have to worry about where you define them. But another alternative is you could actually put this definition in a separate macro file. So let's do that. Let's open up, I'm going to open up, uh, let's say macros, open up a document. Uh, and I'm going to take this definition and I'm going to put it into this document that just says macros. Okay. Uh, and this is so let's say you have a whole bunch of macros, uh, your own custom, uh, div, you know, your own creation, and you don't want to have them clogging up every single document you have. Um, you can just put them in one single thing. And uh, now what we can do, oops, I didn't mean to close that out. Now what we can actually do is, well, actually let's rerun it, run it, and we'll see that now that the macros are gone, it's not going to know what to do with this BL stuff. So it's going to just ignore it. So you'll see that all of this got interpreted as part of uh, the header. Um, but anyway, we can add a macro. We can go here, or yeah, I got to make sure I'm doing it right. So I think it's uh, macros. What did I name it? Did I name it macros? Yeah, whatever. Macros. Uh, maybe I didn't. Let me double check. Actually, scratch that. I, I stopped the video for a second. That's actually a, a more complicated way of doing it. Instead of doing it on the command line, one thing you can do is at the beginning of your document, let's say you know you all you have one rolling macro file where you keep all the stuff you need. You can actually just sort it or sort it, source it at the beginning of whatever file you have. So I've named the macros file macros. I can just name it that at the beginning of my document and then this file is going to read it. So whenever you have a document, you can just source it wherever it is. That's the easier way to do it. Um, so you'll see now these bulleted items are indeed here, uh, but the definition of BL, I mean, if we look for definition of BL, it's not there. That's because it's in, um, it's in the macros file, as we said, and we're just loading that up. So you can easily source, and of course this, I mean, this is similar to using tech packages or something like that. You can you can throw a bunch of shortcuts, you can throw a bunch of simplifications in a particular file and use them and it, it works very well. Um, so that's pretty much all I wanna talk about. I mean, obviously we're not uh, going into the specifics of all the things you can do with, do with macros, but this is just to give you an idea of how to define them, how to use them, how to put them in a file, how you can customize this um, customize Groff to do pretty much whatever you want it to do. So anyway, that's it. So I'll see you guys uh, next time. Again, I'll do one on pre-processing pretty soon. And uh, yeah, all right. Hope you enjoyed it.